Hey though, back again. We got a pretty quick problem, but a kind of a history lesson all in one. So the statement reads, in 1897, J.J. Thompson discovered the electron by measuring the charge to mass ratio of cathode rays, actually streams of electrons with charge Q and mass M as follows. A. First, he placed the beam through uniform cross electric and magnetic fields E and B mutually perpendicular and both of them perpendicular to the beam and adjusted the electric field until he got zero deflection. What then was the speed of particles in, ter uh, in terms of E and B? Um, and then B, then he turned off the electric field and measured the radius of curvature uh, R of the beam as deflected by the magnetic field alone. In terms of E, B, and R, what is the charge to mass ratio, Q over M, of the particles? Well, for A, a quick uh, investigation of the Lorentz force tells us that F equal Q times E plus V cross B, but since they're equaling out to one another perpendicular, we know that they equal zero. Therefore, the terms inside must equal one another in order to cancel like that. So E is equal to VB where V is now equal to E over B. Pretty simple inspection there. Uh, for the sake of B, though, the cyclotron formula tells us that uh, the momentum MV is equal to QB times R. Solving that for the uh, charge to mass ratio, or QM, we have to divide by BR on both sides, leaving us with uh, N divided by M to the other side, leaving us with Q over M equal V divided by B over R, and we just found V from part A, so we put that in. Uh, notice with the fraction in the numerator, we just knock down the denominators to one another, leaving us with E over B squared R. I actually did this experiment in uh, graduate school in an advanced lab, and what was difficult that we found out was the fact that it's hard to account for every magnetic field around especially in that laboratory where there was other apparatuses running and since they're running on currents, they generated their own magnetic field. And this is very difficult to account for when we're looking at the error rates. So bravo to JJ for figuring this out in the 1800s, 1900s. That's pretty cool.